Hey guys, it's Jordan, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make Space 92 1605 Filth on Acid Style Techno. We're going to be talking not just about how to make like a hard drop, but also about how to build it up and just some general arrangement stuff. I'm going to be showing you guys a bunch of new stuff in this video that I haven't shown you before yet. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, mini presets, everything that you just heard in the intro is available right on top of the description on my bank camp for just five dollars. This really helps support me. Definitely go grab that if you guys enjoyed these videos. Thanks for the support, guys, and let's dive in. All right, so here's the project. We're at 1:31 p.m. and the first sound that we have up here is going to be the kick groove. Now, there's five layers going on here. So, it's made up of... This is just like the main, you know, nice... Fat kick sample that I've started with. I EQ'd it a little bit. I cut out the low end. I also cut this out. This is really just having to do with this kick. Because this specific kick... Just had a lot of that frequency right there. I think it's like 1.35 kilohertz. So, I just cut that. That's just this kick specific, but yeah. Really don't need much processing other than EQ. Like if you're doing like a lot of extra saturation and compression and stuff like that with your kick, chances are you need to go back and get a better kick sample to start with. This EQ is just a little thing to make this fit into the overall track better. And that's all we need it for. Then we have our rumble. So you can see these top two layers, very simple. It's just a basic rumble kick. Like chances are, you know, there's already something like this happening in most tracks. It's just those layers on top that really make a difference. But yeah, so for the rumble, it's made using that same kick you just saw. What's happening here is I actually have this arpeggiator sending 16th notes into it. And then we put reverb on it. Now the secret here is we turn the decay time and size down because it makes the reverb kind of fatter and more like full bodied. We put on this amp. Which obviously way distorts it, but you can hear it really brings out that low end, and then you just low pass it, so you're getting just the lows. And there we go. And then the other thing that's really important here is I have a utility converting this to mono. Now you'll notice the amp does do mono, so you don't really need this, but it's something important to keep in mind, because a lot of times people don't use the amp. Like, you could also use, say, like, Ableton's Overdrive, right? Like, you could just take that and, like... Yeah, it's giving you that similar super distorted reverb, but if we take out the utility. See, it's super wide stereo. And that's one of the first things, like, when you send your track to a label, or if you try to just, like, send it to a DJ or something, that's going to make them right away not want to sign it or not play the track. It's like, you need your bass to be in mono. So that utility there is an important thing to remember. And yeah, then I just have a compressor, side chaining this to the main kick. And then EQ, which is just cutting out everything below 23.5 kilohertz. Just cutting out some headroom there with the stuff we wouldn't really be hearing. And then also, I have a cut at 100 hertz. And there we are. So again, this kick, all the stuff that you see down here, these three layers, or these extra layers, I should say. Those on their own, as you can hear, aren't that solid. Like, obviously it's a nice groove. But it really needs to stand on top of this. So you gotta start with the really solid rumble kick, and then you can do all those extra things. But yeah, so in the next layer here, it's just this punch kick. And this is just another kick that I made. I believe actually it was made in the same session that I made this one. So there's the kick. Like, I'm pretty sure it's based on the same sample. And then I just have an EQ cutting out the lows, and then we just put that on top. Just for some nice punch in the mix. And that's really important, too, to get it to really get that, like, like, punching through the mix like you want. Without it. And then with it, you can hear a world of difference. So, yeah. Then we have this mid bass. And so this is kind of like a rolling bass. Essentially what's happening here is you can see we just have straight 16th notes, but then we're creating a rhythm using the velocities, right? We're doing like dun 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 
As you can see, if we just take the velocities and make them all the same, so it's not really quite going to give you the same vibe. So, the goal with this is we're trying to create some movement kind of in the low end. And I think it does that really well. And then the secret is kind of combining that velocity change with some stuff inside of the synth. So if you look at this, you can see it's just this instrument rack with two wavetable patches. It's just because I wanted more wavetables and more oscillators. So essentially the first one sounds like this, and the second one sounds like this. So it's two very like clearly different sounds. And yeah, and so the first one is just this pulse dual. And then this AEIOU as well. And those are just going into a low pass filter, which has a little envelope on it. I also have an envelope on the oscillator positions. And then this is the thing that's making this work with those velocities. You can see in the MIDI here, we've set the velocity to the filter frequency and the amp. So now, when you tweak this, you're able to essentially just create more expression in there. See, it's a very powerful way to do that. And then we just have a bit of unison. And the second layer is based on the same exact patch, right? If you look at this, you can see it's just two wavetables. This one, I've got the envelope routed a little bit differently. But then there's also an envelope on the filter. And then if you look at the MIDI here, same deal. And this has even more mapped to the velocity. The interesting thing is you can map almost anything. You know, you can do, like, the FM amount. You can do, like... If you were doing like this, you could do like the sync amount, like it could literally be anything, but like it just creates this really expressive moving bass. And then also just have a low pass automation. And here, because then there's also this breakdown here. Where I just put in quarter notes. And it sounded really cool like this. And that can kind of work really well in that little breakdown there. Because if we get rid of that, this part feels like it's missing something. You know, this provides like a backdrop. So yeah, and then on that, we just have a bit of echo. I actually have a little bit of a limiter to kind of push it all a little bit closer together. And then a compressor, side chaining it to the kick. And also a high pass filter, which just makes that disappear right there. And then the last bass layer is actually this loop. This is from one of my sample packs. So this is a little bass sequence that I made, very similar to the bass I just showed you. If you listen to this one with like... So it's a super groovy bass pattern, but then what's happening is you get that on top of... So this, so this mid bass here. Right, like that's doing one thing. But then you combine... Dun, 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 on top of that. I can hear like it's creating a lot of groove there. And these aren't really like low end bases, right? Like this isn't adding any sub frequencies. Or anything you'd really consider to be bass. But they are bases and they're just adding like a lot of like nice movement there. You know, if you don't have those, the track's gonna feel a bit. Like, you can do it, but it just sounds a lot more interesting, I think. Yeah, like, it's really filling that track out. And the only effects we have on the group here are just an EQ, which is cutting out below 33 hertz. Again, just cutting out that stuff that you wouldn't hear anyway. And then I have a high-pass filter on here, which just comes on at some different times. <laughs> then we have the lead. So this lead is based around a pretty simple rhythm, right? It's just this... Dun 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 Right, like a pretty simple little rhythm. And that's how you want to think about it. You want to start with like just one note, just doing like... Like just that... Dun 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 Like just that rhythm. And then you can go and add the notes in later. I can see, so we're in the key of F sharp minor here. So like we're just using like, like we're literally walking right up the scale, like root note, ninth, which is just a simple way of saying two notes up from the root, minor third, fourth, 
fifth, or sixth, excuse me. And then there's the fifth up an octave. <laughs> And then here it just resolves really nicely. So we get a fifth there, and then it goes to the root note. So if you end on that root note, it comes back to the start really well that way. So, pretty simple riff there, but then it's made with two layers. So we've got this one. Which is kind of like this nice, like, fat analog sound. You can see it's just two saw waves going into a low pass filter with a bit of an envelope. And then I've got some vibrato and some unison. And then we have a little bit of this amp blended in there, and then a high pass filter. And then this one. It's just this wavetable patch. And what we're doing here is, you can see we have a little bit of white noise. I actually made this with the operator and just dragged it in. And then we have a saw wave. A little bit of unison. Amp envelope. And then what's happening is that's also on the filter frequency. But then... You're getting two filters here. So I have like the second one turned on and it's a low pass filter, but it's all the way up. So if we turn that off. Like essentially what's happening is now we have the pluck happening with one filter. So you're still getting that punchy sound. But then the other one isn't doing that. So you're still getting the saw wave coming through. So you get this really fat sound. Right, like you're hearing this blended with this. So it's going to create a more full sound. And yeah, then we just have a little bit of unison on there. And then on the group of these leads, I just have a little bit of echo, so just giving them some space. We have this low pass filter, which is just really for the break. As well as this auto pan, which is making it sound side chain to the kick. That's what's giving it that nice, like, kind of punchy rhythm. I have a washout, which you can see is just a high pass filter and a reverb. A little bit of compression there too. And then a high pass filter, just that comes on here to make sure it's not going to get in the way of the bass. And there's also this little utility that just kind of makes it a little bit quieter in this part, because it tended to be a little bit too loud, but then too quiet if I didn't have that. So yeah. Then we have this art. It's a pretty simple little pattern in the key of F sharp minor, but you'll notice what it's doing is it's actually starting on the fourth because you'll see right here, yeah, this is our root note, right? This F sharp. And that's still the note that you hear the most of, right? You'll notice every single one of these has just like two notes or one note, but the root note is the one that has the most notes. So that's how you can kind of like not start on your root note but still give it that feel and make it feel like it is, you know, actually in the key of F sharp as opposed to C sharp, which is what it starts on. And yeah, so we're just doing fourth, minor third, another fourth, and then the root note. So really, it's just three notes. And I actually made that with this little device here. It's called the Noodler. You might have heard of it. Maybe I'll put it in the description or something. But yeah, it's just like a cool device for generating little MIDI ideas like this. You can get really creative with it. And so I was able to create this very interesting little MIDI pattern that's only three notes, but it really works in this track. It's very simple. But it contrasts really well against the other elements. And yeah, so then the sound on this one's made with analog. It's just a square wave and a saw wave going into a low pass filter with a little bit of an envelope I've got the amp envelope like that and then some vibrato just a bit of chorus a bit of echo where you can see we have either side at different times so it's giving you a wider stereo image I have some reverb which is just being automated to make that disappear there a little bit of drum bus which I rarely do these days but I think it can help in little increments like this to kind of make this feel just a bit fatter or more full I have an auto pan on here, which is making it sound side chain to the kick. And then just a low pass filter, just to bring it in and out in the actual drop. And that's kind of a thing too, is like, you'll notice that this lead and the ARP, the low pass filters, 
kind of move at the same time, right? Like, as the lead is disappearing, the ARP is coming in. And then as the ARP is disappearing, the lead is coming back in. And so that's how you're going to want to work it. You know, if you're going to have these two things, it's kind of like, okay, start the drop with the lead. Let that go. Let that build. And then right here at bar 41, this would probably be the point where if you just kept that lead going, it would get boring. So then you make the lead disappear a little bit and bring in the ARP. Like, it's actually pretty simple if you break it down like that. But yeah, it's all working together. Then we have these bass stabs. Now these are the kind of sounds you hear in a lot of these tracks. And essentially what's happening is they're just made with kind of different combinations of like wavetable and operators and stuff like that. It's actually not that hard to make them, but I think it's an easy sound to mess up. I think if you don't know what you're doing, you can kind of go a little bit too crazy with like some of the different effects and kind of do too much. So it's really just about getting like a good clean sound in the synth. So that's the first one. So this is this patch. Just kind of like a pretty simple operator FM donk. You can see it's just three sine waves all in different octaves with kind of plucky envelopes. And then that's layered with just this like nice fat saw wave. And that's just the saw wave going through a low pass filter and then you can see I have on the matrix we have yeah this envelope on the position as well as the filter frequency. And then we have a little bit of unison. So you put these both together and you get a really fat sound. So that's all you have to do. You know, I think a lot of people think that it's like, oh, you make the bass donk and then you got this perfect saturation that you're going to put on it and all this kind of stuff. It's not. It's just really good layering and just taking like two sounds that might be a little bit thin or weak on their own. But when you put them together, they're going to sound really big and fat. And then we just have a high pass filter on that, a bit of filter delay to give it that movement like that, which I'm pretty sure like a lot of these bass stabs that you hear in these tracks are using filter delay, like literally the exact effect you're seeing right here. And then I just have a bit of amp. Here's about that. And with it, it's just blended in there. And then the last thing is just a high pass filter. And yeah, then on this one, so this one's more like a, but it's actually using kind of an interesting sound design principle. So this is something I kind of learned back in the day trying to make like dubstep sounds and stuff. But essentially, if you take a sound, like take like a saw wave, for example, and a square wave, and you have one really, really low and one really, really high, and then you distort them, you get like these really nice kind of like interesting textures out of that. And you can see if I take out the low one, So I just have that. You don't notice it until I bring it back in. But yeah, so you can really make some interesting sounds this way. Just try layering together like a really low saw wave with like a really high saw wave or something like that, and then distorting it. But then the extra thing on this one is the filter. You can see we have a low pass, and then it's just got that envelope. So to get that, like we turn that off. And yeah, then we just have a bit of unison. You can see it's all the way up. I have a pedal going into a reverb, which is then being distorted even more by an overdrive and then a little bit of drum bus, which really the distortion here, this is all just like sound design stuff. Like this isn't like, oh, you're oversaturating it and making it messy. Like we're not really worried about that. It's just about like good sound design. I have a high pass filter and then an auto pin, which is just making it bounce up from the kick. And the last layer down here, it's just this fat. So it's this saw wave with a bit of pulse width and a bit of sync layered with this. Just a square wave, which you can see has a ton of movement and no unison. And then this one has unison. And then if you put those together, you can create these like massive fat bass stabs. So yeah, I really recommend try putting like one synth that has unison layered with a synth that doesn't have unison. You can make some really fat sounds. And then it's just being multi band distorted. So you have the highs, the mids, and then the lows, which are completely dry. You can see I blended most of those distortions as well. And then it's just a bit of reverb, a bit of drum bus, high pass, and then an auto pan. And yeah, and then on the group there, we just have a bit of a high pass filter as well. Then we have our hi hats. So it starts with this main hi-hat, which is three layers. So 
So you put those together and you get a really punchy hi-hat. Then we have like these, which is just two different samples inside of a drum rack here, but you can make these really like nice shaker sounds. I also have two shakers underneath that too, like this one. Kind of adding some more rhythm. We have these little like reverse hi-hats as well that come in. Just to kind of give some movement. Then we have this ride. This is actually from my 50 huge rag loops sample pack. But yeah, it's just like a really fat ride sample. And then on the group there, you'll notice the only processing... So the processing isn't actually doing anything. And that's because we're not processing these as a group. All we're doing is we're just using this, like this low pass filter and the break to kind of bring them in and out. And then there's just a reverb that just makes them disappear as well. But it's not actually like any saturation or anything to like make these fatter. Like it's just solid sounds and we're letting those shine. And yeah, then we have the vocal. You know, pretty simple. That's more just about finding a really good sample. Got a bit of echo and reverb on it as well. We have actually two more bass stabs. So these are just kind of like these two little sounds that come in, you know. It's like kind of contrasting the other little bass stabs as well. But these are like, you can count on them through the whole thing. Like the other bass stabs really are just in the main drop. But then these are playing even in the break. And so all it is, this one's just like a pretty simple 303 sound. With operators, just a saw wave, bandpass filter with an envelope. And then we're just distorting it. You know, a bit of echo and reverb to make it a bit stereo. And then some more distortion. And then even more distortion. But yeah, like, pretty simple sort of 303 patch. And then this one, it's actually based on a really similar sound. I'm pretty sure it is the same sound as the one up there. It's just a bit more kind of like dulled down. And then I did change some things in here, like I think. Yeah, it's just a little bit different. Then we have this big, like, break bass. So this is doing a pretty standard chord progression, I guess, for techno. It's a root note. So F sharp, the fourth, and then the sixth. And then it comes back down. And then what's happening here is, for the sound, it's just made with these two wavetable patches. It's just a saw wave with unison, and then a saw wave without unison. We have their low-pass filters mapped to this macro. And then I'm just bringing that up throughout the break. Pretty simple. But it's just building the tension. And then all we have on that for effects is just a high pass filter, which just makes it disappear. So it's a really fat bass already. You really don't need anything. Just to make it smoothly disappear there. And yeah, and then the last stuff down here is really just like the effects. Like you can see we have like... You know, like down sweep. This like reverb clap I made with some echo and reverb. A few different sweeps and stuff. These are just made from some elements from my sample packs. Also, I have this little white noise build in the part before the drop. Where's that just some white noise, bandpass filter, and then a bit of chorus with like a really high feedback. And then I'm automating the rate on that. And there's some reverb, high pass. I think this auto pan. Had it with something else, but yeah, so you know, it's all pretty simple, right? We even just have like this build snare, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm automating two things I'm automating the volume, but then we're also automating the decay, so it starts out kind of small, and then by the end, it's massive. And then we also have a little bit of reverb automation make that just disappear there and the last thing actually is this auto pan now this is just doing a little bit of that kind of like fake side chain effect but you can hear because the snare is just doing da -da 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 -da. so this can make that kind of like bounce up a little bit more it's a really subtle thing but it's going to give a little bit more motion to your build and i think it makes it a bit more kind of like tension release and all that kind of stuff too because it makes it more powerful <laughs> But yeah, 
yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets. Literally every single thing from the video is available at the top of the description. Thank you so much to everybody who goes and grabs that. It really helps support me. If you guys enjoyed these videos, definitely go grab it because it's just five bucks, but you get this awesome resource and it really helps keep me going as well. You know, I don't make a whole lot just off of YouTube ads and stuff like that. But with this, I'm able to keep going and keep bringing you guys new, awesome videos every single day. And yeah, thank you so much everybody and I will see you tomorrow with another video.